All right, I'm really excited about this series, Demystifying Docker. I'm doing it because I've had so many conversations with other developers, people I meet at conferences, um, where the people will say, I'm really excited about Docker because everybody keeps saying Docker is awesome, but I can't seem to wrap my head around it, and I can't seem to find any resources online that help me actually get started with Docker and understand you know, what it's actually good for. So we're gonna kind of cover that. We're gonna start off with a high level overview. What is Docker? Then we're gonna show you with really quick, just a few lines of code, how you can deploy applications. Uh, and then some kind of various thoughts on it along the way. So let's get into it. Demystifying Docker. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna compare Docker to Vagrant or Docker to a virtual machine. Since this seems to be the hang up that I keep hearing from people. Okay, so I get Vagrant, but I don't get Docker. Well, that's because they're really different. Um, here's kind of for you visual people, a visual demonstration of what Vagrant is. And I'm going to kind of show you real quickly Vagrant for those of you guys who aren't familiar with it. Um, and I'm going to show you how it's not really a fair comparison. Um, so Vagrant is, the goal is to solve the problem of it works on my machine, it doesn't work on production. Or it works on my machine, it doesn't work on this other developer's machine. That happens because somewhere along the road, you might be on a different operating system. Say your machine is a Mac or Windows machine and you're pushing it out to a Linux you know, server. Um, that alone could cause problems. Uh, you might be running WAMP or MAMP on your computer if it's a PHP application. Um, and these guys are actually running a full, you know, just native installation of an Apache stack. Um, or you have a different tool set that you're using than another developer. At any rate, your environments are not the same. So we solve that by spinning up a virtual machine in our computer. Um, that's the exact same thing we're going to be pushing to staging or production. So we'll use virtual we'll use VirtualBox and Vagrant to spin up let's say an Ubuntu 14.04 machine, which is exactly what we're using in staging and production. So here, that, that is, it's an empty machine. Um, and then you run your provisioning script against your virtual machine exactly as you would against staging or production. So the provisioning script will install the correct version of Node.js or Rails or PHP. It'll set up all the user permissions. It'll, it'll install any other software, configure anything that needs to be configured. So at the end of the day, these are basically the same environment. So now I know that if I dump my project code into here and run it in this machine and it works, um, it's pretty much going to work when I push it out to GitHub and these servers pull it or I push it, however you do your deployments. Um, when the code gets dumped into these, it's going to run the same. So that's Vagrant in a nutshell different boxes, we dump our code into each box. Let's look at Docker and see why Docker is actually different. So for Docker, we've got our machine and we've got our project code um, and Docker runs off of containers. So I use my Docker file, which is usually a five to maybe 30 line fired file. Docker files are really small. The Docker file builds what's called a Docker image. That Docker image contains all my project code it contains, you know, say an installation of Node.js, if it's a Node.js app. It contains any um, inst installments of programs that I need. And so it's basically my complete application wrapped up in an image. Now it's not a full, say, Ubuntu machine, because I don't need that. This image is designed to sit on top of a machine. So from that image, I can then run as many containers as I want until I run out of processing power and RAM on my machine. So this is the virtual machine on my Mac again. And I have my Docker image on the machine and then I can run that Docker image and it runs as a container. And I can run many, many containers in the machine once again until I run out of stuff. So this image is my project code. So instead of on Vagrant where I put my project code into environments, um, with Docker, you're going to actually build your environment and now I can run that environment anywhere. If a machine has Docker on it, my container is going to run and it's going to work. So then you push that Docker image up to say Docker Hub or Quay.io, which are kind of like the GitHub of Docker images. And there's a bunch out there. You can have your own private repository. The image goes out there. That's like your GitHub repository, so to speak. And now any other machine can run your image. So let's say I called this image, um, my username is Will R. Stern. Let's say I did Will R. Stern slash my new Node app. That's the name of it. So now on any computer, I can say Docker run Will R. Stern slash my new Node app. And this whole image, source code and all, will run with the complete environment. I didn't install 
no JS on this machine. I didn't provision this machine at all because the image has everything. It has a complete environment all contained into one. So I could run a Node.js image on this machine. This container then has Node.js installed and has anything else installed, NPM. And then I could also run a Rails app on the same machine. Rails is installed on that container, but Rails is not installed in this container. So they act like virtual machines, but they're really self-contained processes, so to speak. Uh, let me kind of show you an image here uh, that I found somewhere online. I have no idea what this puppy dog is about, but this is basically the anatomy of a Docker container. So this is your actual web server. You've got your web server. You have the host operating system, which is Ubuntu or even something lighter and it has Docker installed. That's all you need. Docker is installed. And then all the apps run as Docker containers um, and they all sit on top of your host operating systems resources. So they all sit on top of the Linux kernel. They all access the same computer's processor and RAM. And that's basically a Docker container. You build your image once, push it out, and now you can run it anywhere. So kind of in a large scale production environment, here's what that looks like. I've got this big cloud cluster of say 10 computers. They're all running either CoreOS uh, or Mesos. These are kind of some of the big players. Uh, basically what these two operating systems do is they allow all the computers to act as one. They share all their resources. Um, and so now all you have to do is spin up containers and they all run within your cluster. And then if you start running out of overall cluster memory or overall cluster computing, you just add more nodes. So let's say, okay, I'm just gonna add 10 more computers to this cluster and now I can run 30 more containers. So you can just say, um, let's once again, let's say this image is called my node app. I can run my node app four times, boom, 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 boom. And then I can spin up an Nginx container and have it load balance these four and then expose a private port out to the real world so then the real world can access my app. This is how Docker works. It's, it's really awesome for cloud computing, really awesome for cluster computing, and that's where it really, really starts to shine. But actually, I think Docker is, um, one of my favorite uses of Docker is to just provision a single machine and deploy with no provisioning at all. You just spin up a machine, make sure Docker's installed, and then you can run your containers on it. So that's kind of your brief overview. If you're not a visual person, this is probably confusing. But if you're a visual person, it probably helped. Let's just get into Docker. Show me the code. Uh, we'll do that in this next video.